We're gonna do a video now on grafting. This U here just had a lamb here a few seconds ago, as you can see. This lamb just dropped out of the U. Uh, we have a lamb that needs grafted really bad, that needs a mother. So what we're gonna do is, the first thing we're gonna do is belly bump this U to check to make sure she doesn't have another one. To me, she doesn't have another one. I don't feel anything in there. A lot of times we'd like to catch this used water before she lambs, but she pushed and pushed the lamb out and the water sack was in behind the lamb, it appears. So what I'm gonna do now is we got this bucket here. We're trying to catch all the water that comes out of this U so we can use it to put on the other lamb to graft the lamb onto it. So I'm gonna glove her. And luckily there's a water bag right here. So I'm gonna put this water bucket under here, break that water, see? And get that all out and into there. So now we got the used water, which is the first step to the grafting process. Here, move that back. Now we're gonna let her lick off this lamb and be a mother, make sure she wants to be a good mother, make sure that this lamb's healthy. Now that we have this used water, the next step in determining if she is a good candidate for a second lamb is we're gonna strip her out and milk her. We're gonna make sure that this ewe has enough milk to take a second lamb. As long as she does, uh, we're gonna go into the grafting process, which we'll show you how we do that next. But first, like I said, we got the water. That's the first step. The second step is we'll milk her and see if she has enough milk to feed another lamb. Another thing I like to do is check, for instance, this is a ewe lamb. Um, we're a lot more likely here to graft a second one on one that has a ewe lamb. Uh, just because we're usually trying to get our weathers ready and fat to sell early, but in this January group, we're actually selling all of the January born ewe lambs too, so this ewe lamb be for sale as well. But So right now, we got our water. The ewe's being a good mother. This is a first time mother. She's being really good at this lamb and licking on it. I'm gonna go get a cup and we're gonna strip her down and see if she has enough milk to take a second lamb. And then we'll show you the grafting process. Okay, we're back here now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this down we're gonna strip down this ewe and see if she has a lot of milk. Another reason I thought this ewe would be a good candidate for this before, like I talked about in an earlier video, we keep really good records of these ewes. Uh, we also record on each one when we first milk them out, how much milk they have when they first lamb, if they're a good mother and such things like that, which help us going forward to make decisions like this on if this ewe'd be a good candidate for a second lamb. This U had a full sib, a flush mate. This U is a flush mate to Strictly Business. And this cup has a hole in it and it's just running out the bottom of it. So I'm not getting a very good uh, very good read there on how much milk she has. <laughs> Typical farming probs, this milk has, milk's just running out the bottom of the cup, just lovely. But I'm learning by milking on this U that she does have plenty of milk to raise a second lamb. Like I said, she actually uh, is a split embryo lamb. So she has an identical twin, tag 9015, that lambed in the last group. And she had so much milk, we had her in the jug for over a week, feeding her grass hay and no grain and trying to actually get her milk production to go down as opposed to up because she had too much milk for one lamb and would have, done a, would have been a lot better suited a candidate to feed a second one. So therefore, since this is an identical twin to that one, I think this you would be much better suited as well to raise a second lamb. So we're gonna go ahead and start the grafting process. Okay, the next step in the grafting process, we have our graftee here. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this lamb in a warm, in a, and give him a warm bath. We're fortunate enough, we got warm water right here in our jug room. That's the number one key to get this done. We wanna get this to about the body temperature of the sheep so the sheep don't get chilled. The two main things that we're trying to do here is we're trying to get all the poop off this lamb's butt. This is actually gonna be a pretty complicated graft because this lamb's about a week old already and its mom is just not cutting it. She's not making enough milk. And this one is uh, one that we have real high hopes in and we really don't wanna put this lamb on the milk machine because it's so used to sucking a ewe. It'll be much easier to get this lamb grafted onto another mom if she'll accept them than it would be to put this lamb on the milk machine at this point in time. But the biggest thing we're trying to do is get the butt on this lamb clean. We wanna get all this extra manure off. We wanna make sure that this lamb's clean. We don't want it to smell like its other mother. Most of you know when you're raising sheep that you always identifies her lamb by smelling its butt. 
So that's why the first step to this process is we want to get their butt real clean. Uh, and then we want to get the rest of the lamb cleaned off and uh, basically give it a bath, but we're not going to use soap is the big thing. The reason we're not using soap is because uh, soap has fragrance. We don't want any extra scent. We're just trying to get this lamb basically clean and get the smell of its old mother off of it so that we can soak it in that ambionic fluid that we got off of the other ewe to just lamb so we can get this one grafted on her and make her think that she's had a second lamb. If we do it this way, we don't have to use a head gate. Uh, we don't have to force anything into taking one. We can kind of just do a natural process. We found this to work really good. This is probably about the 40th lamb we've grafted this year. It's something we believe a bunch in because we'd much rather have those lambs drinking on a ewe than we would on a milk machine or on a bottle because we find them to be a lot healthier. They wean better and they go do better for our customers afterwards if those things have had a chance to uh, suck a ewe and pretty much have a normal life for, for what a show lamb ought to be as a baby. So as you can see, we got this lamb pretty clean. We're gonna lay it down in here too, scrub it a little more. This one's a little harder than some of the other ones. Like I said, this lamb is as old as we've ever tried to graft, but this lamb has been real hungry and would drink on any of you that we put on it. So I feel like it'll be a good candidate to go to its mother, to its new mother, as long as that mother will take it. I feel like this could be, will be a successful graft. What do you think, Stetson? Go get me a, a glove, bud. One of the... Okay, I feel like we got this lamb pretty clean now. The next thing we're gonna do is try, is try to dry it off. We're gonna dry this lamb off to the best of our ability with our hands here is what I always do, just try to get them partially dry. And then we're gonna take a towel just hold on, bud. We're gonna take a towel and dry this little guy off. We're just trying to get some of this excess water off so we can get that ambiotic fluid soaked up on this lamb's wool and fleece and hair so that that new mother is more likely to take it. Okay, now that we got the lamb dry, we're gonna show you the next step, which is taking it and soaking it in the ambiotic fluid and trying to give it to its new mother. Okay, the next step, we wanna take this, the water and ambiotic fluid from this lamb, just you that we just caught. We wanna soak this lamb up in it real good. It's a little disgusting, but it won't hurt them. It's no different than what the fluid they come out in. Jamie's not a fan of my attire, apparently. See, we're just gonna let that all soak up. Okay, I agree with Jamie, that's annoying. I mean, I've done a lot of these myself, but I will say, you know, it's nice to have a second person sometimes because there's a lot of time, a lot of things going on while we're doing this especially to get them to go the easiest. So now that we got this lamb soaked in this water, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to this ewe that just lambed. I'm gonna go to this ewe that just lambed. And I think this is a critical part that I think helps a bunch with this process. I'm gonna glove this ewe. And I'm gonna get in there to where her cervix is at. I'm gonna just kind of pump my fist open and shut, open and shut. And as you can see, that's kind of making her have contractions. Can you see it? Yeah. Nice. That's kind of making her have some contractions. So we're gonna work that a little bit just to kind of make her feel like she is having a second lamb to make this process as believable as possible. 
Once I pull my hand out, I'll ask them to give me that other lamb and we'll put that new lamb in front of her and let her lick it off. All right, guys, I'm ready. So now I'll pull my hand out. We'll give her this second lamb. And as you can see, she's gonna go straight to licking this new guy off. She's also, we'll make sure. The next step that I do to this process is I'll sit with them like this for at least 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure she gets this lamb licked off really good. Make sure that this uh, is working. If I, f I always figure once they get them licked like this, that's kind of how they, you know, bond with their moms. That's kind of how the you bonds with this lamb. So I think if we get it all, if we get her to lick these off both real good, I feel like this will be a successful graft and she'll take both these lambs. Sometimes too, I'll take this other lamb and just rub some more of that fluid on the two of them back and forwards there. Just trying to make sure that they smell real similar. This isn't a perfect graft, like I said. Usually when we graft these, we're doing them in the same group. Within a day or so, the lambs are about the same size. Those usually go really, really easy. Like I said, this one may take just a little bit more time here for her to get adapted, and, but I feel like she's a good candidate. She's licking it right off. It is a little bigger than her other lamb because it's a week old, but I feel like she's gonna take these and this will be a successful graft. So like I said, at this point in time, the only other thing I'd like to talk about if this ewe wasn't wanting to mother on this lamb at this point in time, uh, the next step we would do is we give her oxytocin. Uh, oxytocin will make her have contractions and uh, it'll make her mothering ability go up. We've used that a lot of times to kind of increase their mothering ability while we're grafting to make the grafts more successful. We've also given that uh, oxytocin IV while we do this. That'll get it straight in the vein and they'll start can have contractions within you know, within 30 seconds or so, you'll notice a difference in that U. So a lot of times we'll utilize that with this to make sure that it goes good and to make sure that they're more receiving to the new lamp. I'm trying to think. Uh, the other ways in that we've used oxytocin too is we've actually had used lamb where we'll miss it. And maybe she lambed a half hour ago or an hour ago and we kind of want to reintroduce those contractions and we'll go in and sometimes you know, get that last water bag and use that oxytocin to help with that process as well. But at this point in time, I, this is a successful graft. We're gonna sit with this U for 10 or 15 minutes and we're gonna make sure that she licks these lambs off. And then I'll start the video back up and we'll show you the end when she's feeding and taking care of both these lambs. Uh, to finish off our grafting lamb video, this is the lamb we grafted here about 20 minutes ago. But like I said, it's pretty old. This lamb's over a week old. Yeah, heck, he already has his tail banded. But we soaked him up real good in the fluid. This you licked him off really well. And as you can see, since his mom don't have much milk, he wanted to get right to the nursing. And the ewe's licking him off, rubbing his butters, making sure that he's, uh, making sure that he's getting full. So I think this is gonna be a successful graft. This is the last step to the process. The next thing that we will do though, is we'll check this ewe religiously. Sometimes we'll even put them under our barn cameras so we can make sure that the mother's not beating on them or anything. Usually by 24 hours, you'll be able to tell. If you come out the next day and the ewe's nudging it away and not taking care of it once it's dry, you'll know it didn't work. But like I said earlier, I think this is our 40th graft this year and they've, knock on wood, have all been successful. Uh, we usually have one or so a year though where some ewes are just not receptive to it. It don't matter how good you do it. Sometimes it just don't work, but that's a very, very rare case. And I think this is a great way to get lambs onto a mother that's gonna actually make milk for you. It's gonna be less work long-term. And we think this is a great uh, production kind of, kind of thing that a lot of people could learn that can really help save you time down the road and also help make you more money when these lambs look better when it comes selling time when they're on a ewe that loves them and takes care of them and feeds them. So the last step to this grafting, grafting process for me, we got this lamb grafted. As you can see, its belly's tight full. That thing's gonna have the scours tomorrow from eating so much colostrum, which is okay. But this lamb is gonna need the colostrum that that one we just grafted sucking all out of her. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go milk this ewe before that grafted lamb sucks all the colostrum down. And we're gonna get another 120 cc's of colostrum. And then I'm gonna just come back probably and tube this lamb again in four hours, uh, just to make sure that that lamb gets a good start and gets enough colostrum. I don't want that other, other lamb 
that's smart and trained to come up and suck her down and have that little guy not get any colostrum. Another thing we'll do a lot of times is uh, when we have ewes with extra colostrum when we're lambing big groups, we'll put some in the fridge while we're lambing a big group in one week. That way in an instance like this, we'd have extra colostrum and we could come back and tube that lamb with it if this ewe gets sucked down for a couple days because we grafted another lamb onto it. That is something to look forward to is to, you know, to look once you graft, there's possible at the first couple days, she might not be making quite enough milk for both of them. You know, you might notice that you just want to keep checking, make sure they're getting enough that they're not getting dehydrated. And what we'll do is we'll slowly increase her feed and we'll feed her a lot of alfalfa in the jug. Uh, basically we're tricking her into telling her to make more milk. When their bag's empty, their brain tells them to make more milk. So if she gets sucked down, if we get her, uh, her NEL level real high in that, in that really, really good alfalfa, and we get that cranked up in her, and we start pushing her on grain, usually these black-faced ewes will really come into milk, and we'll be able to raise two if they have good milk when they uh, do the graft process.